Now, we are doing a series on how to fireproof your faith, how to go through a firestorm and not get burnt, how to go through the storm and not get burnt. You know, the last four years have been filled with pressures and stress. So many have asked me and son, how are we coping or how do we cope with it? And how could I keep on smiling and keep on preaching, going in the midst of a crisis? So I want to share with you how pastor has kept his sanity, my peace of mind, and my walk with Jesus Christ intact. I want to give you a major secret. Now, this is going to be a huge message, not because it's going to be a long message, but I'm going to share with you a very major secret on how to go through a storm and keep smiling. And the secret is made of three words. Are you ready? Three words. Pray, pray, and pray. Yeah, amen. Oh, thank you so much for the enthusiastic clap. Yeah, amen. Pray, pray, and pray. Prayer should be the most natural thing in the world for us to do. It should be as natural as breathing. Everybody takes a deep breath. Ready? Go. Inhale, exhale. Yeah. Breathing is natural. You don't even think about it. The moment you come into the world, you've been breathing. The moment you are, uh, you, you, Breathe your last, you will leave the world. So we need to know three things about prayer. Like breathing, it's so natural. Number one, prayer is a cry. Prayer is a cry. What is the first thing a baby does when he or she comes into the world? It's to cry. How many of you have cried when you were a baby? Put on your hands. The rest of you, I wonder you're a zombie. <laughs> It's the most natural thing for a baby to do. For a baby not to cry will be unnatural. The parents will get worried. The doctors will get worried. The pediatricians will get worried. I have met parents who say to me, my baby has, has been delivered for the last one month. He has yet to cry until today. Because to cry is natural. You know, Psalm 34, verse 15, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their cry. God expects us to cry. A baby cries, why? Because he is uncomfortable. He needs attention. He needs comfort. He needs food. He needs water. He has soiled himself. He's tired. He needs to be cuddled. You see, and when he doesn't know how to express it, he's frustrated, so he cries. As a good father, God is the same. God gets very concerned if we, his children, if we don't cry out to him in our moment of need. In fact, God has pledged himself. Do you know God makes a pledge? to intentionally respond to us when we cry. He has pledged in himself to hear our crying. Job 34, 28 says that he hears the cry of the afflicted. The word afflicted means those who are depressed and discouraged and are in despair because of circumstances, because of situation. God has pledged Himself that when you're down and out and you cry out to Him, He will come to meet your needs. In Luke 18, Jesus told His disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So I want to encourage you, don't give up. We've been going through a, 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 a situation for a long time, but don't give up. Keep on praying. Seven to nine, keep on praying. On the 10th of April, we have all-night prayer meeting. Come, keep on praying. Tomorrow morning, 
those that are coming for Sunday morning, if you, if you know who they are, ask them to come for, for early morning prayer. You see, Jesus says you should always pray and don't give up. And in verse 7, and he says, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? Cry out to him day and night. See, God is a wonderful father who expects us to cry out to him. And it's okay if you cry out in the day. It's okay if you cry out in the night. It's okay if you cry out all the time. And he promises to respond to it as the father that he is. Number one, prayer is a cry. Number two, prayer is conversation. 